Hey guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. Oh, welcome back to the new workshop. Look, by way of breaking the drought and the new year and all that sort of stuff, um, I wanted a little engine that's quick and easy to build and it's going to run and it's going to be reliable and I'm going to be able to build on a weekend. Just to say, hey, look, I can actually make things that work because I'm in a bit of a rut. So, printed some bits for Myford Boy's hot air engine, 3D printed hot air engine. When I was in Tasmania, I picked up one of these travel tins. I should have got two, but one's going to do for now. Um, and this is designed to fit on basically to fit on here. So we're going to need to mix up some epoxy. This goes the trim, but they go in that hole there and there apparently. We just need to open those holes up. That's the retainer for the diaphragm. It's not quite wide enough yet. I think the first thing to do is to mark these two centers. Um, hole here and a hole here. This is what David did, so that was about drilled those those holes both four millimeters so I might just go and do that so I managed to drill these two holes and I'm going to stick this in here it's pretty close to on center there this one is not critical, this one is probably more critical than that one, but it'll do nicely, I think, if we push that all down and some nice, like, decent 24-hour epoxy on it's probably overkill, but at least then it's not going to, not going to come up adrift at any point while I'm building the engine. So, like that like that I'll put a weight on the center it's a pretty flat print and pretty flat tin I don't think it needs clamping or anything this needs to be upright so I'm going to check that just get a square and check it against the against the bench here and put it somewhere safe so it doesn't get bumped I guess that's the next thing and we'll, we'll have a look when we when it's dry so I think that's sort of got it there see that I guess we can see that it's nice and square I've just got the one two three block all propped there nicely um, that hole's somewhere near in the middle the other one's pretty close so this is just a bent hole so it doesn't really matter which where it is but this one here needs to be there, sort of within a couple of mil anyway it's all sorted I'm gonna leave that to dry and go on with something else and 
have a bit of a look at it a bit later on. So we're going to need a circle just in card. Fifteen millimeters diameter. So we we'll just laser cut one of those and I'm going to glue this connecting rod onto that which in turn glues to the, the latex diaphragm. Anyway, let's mix up some glue and do that. We've got this pretty well glued, um, the frame's in place. We've got an extra rail glue around there for airtight seal and this is a nice fit inside the, the tube here. I'm going to run a bit of silicon around that. Just glue it in place. And we're starting to look like an engine. So this is what we got so far. We've found the end of a mechanical pencil and stuck in there. Nice and upright. And we found a piece of... I found a piece of 0.5mm spring, uh, spring wire, which is just a fraction tight. But a bit of brasso in it, and it all seems to be the right fit. <clears throat> I'm going to try this displacer rather than polystyrene at this point. Um, probably it's going to work. This is hollow, and it's a 3D print with only the infill, so all the walls are actually missing. Um, so basically, it'll move the air. But not sure how effective it is. It's got a hollow space in the middle and it's probably it's going to be sort of not too heavy to make this operate. So we'll try that. We'll move back to a traditional polystyrene one if it doesn't work. But I think that might move there pretty nice. I'm going to put a drop of epoxy on the bottom of this wire, I think, and we'll try that out. See if that actually works. But I think it's going to be pretty good. Found a couple of bearings. They're not flanged ones, but these were kicking around. And they're the right size, so... <coughs> might try them. So we've got a couple of ball bearings in here and a piece of silver steel for the 3mm silver steel inside. So let's run in reasonably nice. We need to find a crank pin, which is just a piece of 2mm. Um, don't have anything as yet, but we're still thinking about that. If I find a nice 2mm drill, that might be the answer and grind the ends of it. But at this point... We've got a 75 thou gauge pin, which probably is going to work nicely. So this seems to be working pretty nice if we can find what we've got here. Something's touching. Could be the flywheel's got too much wobble in it. But so far we're looking pretty good. The displacer seems to be functioning pretty well. This 
is all sort of working reasonably well. It needs a couple of collars on there still, just to give this the the right amount of. So so far, pretty happy with that. Everything seems to be working nicely. Everything's ticking over. It's going to need some spaces in it and things, and it still needs the displacer on and the bottom in it, but. Apart from that, it's starting to look pretty good. So last job tonight, there's a bit more epoxy around here to reinforce everything. I've got this running. Pretty nice really. Um, pretty nice. I've epoxied the wire in this and we'll see how that goes. Um, if we can get it so that it drops up and down nicely without touching anything, we might put the lid in the bottom and attach a string to this and see if it runs but we're getting closer it's certainly turning out to be quite a quite a trouble free nice little build and if it runs I'll be giving this one a big tick so so far looking pretty good we've got a buckle flywheel probably we're going to print another one of them and see how that looks a few jobs done this is the other lid and I've glued this in here just as a strength to stop it moving in and out, I think. And that's ready to glue back inside the, the, the bottom of the cylinder, um, like such. I've got this running pretty smooth. We need to make a pin for this so that this picks the displacer up and down. And We've got a displacer which looks like this. It's running fairly concentric and nice. It doesn't run, but it's nice and clean. And nice and square. So it's a piece of 50 thou. A piece of 0.5 millimeter spring wire. And just a polystyrene disc. All I've done is printed a template and um, push this through it and cut it for size so it should be good this goes through the bushing here probably Pretty well goes up and down on its own weight. And this goes in the bottom here. So next job would be mix up some aerodite and put on that all round. And put them together and let that dry. And then we'll start thinking about hooking up some con rods and linkages. So having a look at this diaphragm, it's moving as it should, so pretty happy with that. This flywheel is not good, I've read that ABS and I think it's too soft, I just can't get it to run true at all. I'm printing another one out of PUTG and that should probably fix this issue. I've got this string sorted out here with a crank pin in the back. Two little pieces of electrical flex out of there, holding it in place, and a little link. So this has got another piece of electrical flex holding the string onto the spring wire, and that seems to be working fairly well. It's just on a cup of hot water. But, if you mess with this flywheel at all, it touches. You can hear it there. And I don't like that because this is loose on here. That's where we're at. If we 
peel this off. This hole here is just loose on this pin. Probably cut this piece of string off here. Thread. Like so. It's fairly fussy, but the problem is, the problem is that this hole here isn't really substantial enough. While this flywheel is flat and nice there, it doesn't attach properly so we're going to try harder plastic see what happens then so I guess time for a summary got this pretty well back together um, can put this back on here I think which is the last piece of flex to go on Stop that thing coming off. This is going. It's not going particularly well, but it's going. Um, it's not balanced as well as I'd like, to be honest. But anyway, it's running, sort of. A piece of blue tack, which I don't have, would be the next sort of step, I think, just to balance it properly. That might happen tomorrow. So there we go. That's it running. Now there were some improvements I had to make. Um, it was fairly straightforward to get running. It really wasn't too bad. And I guess first thing I had to really do was swap out the the glove which is nitrile for one that is actual latex which is a bit softer and thinner um, I had to find some blue tack for a proper balance weight it's fairly critical so once it's balanced nicely it runs a lot nicer But yeah, it's running and it's running fairly nicely. So all in all, it's a, a pretty nice engine build. If you're looking for a, a first step into model engineering and you've got a 3D printer, that's probably a really awesome place to start. Requires a little bit of thought, a little bit of nutting out, but um, it basically with, with fairly basic parts off the shelf and 3D prints it's running fairly nice it was easy to get it was easy to get airtight and fairly easy to adjust and now it runs fairly reliably so all in all Good project, glad I got it done. On to the next one. So thanks for watching and thanks for liking and subscribing and all that stuff. Appreciate anyone who stuck with me through the last six months or eight months or something of drought. Got this project going, let's start on another one and, and or, or make some progress on another one and see if we can get that going too. So pretty excited about that and um, more soon guys and girls will be kind to each other.